Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to Nigira Techies. Today, let's talk about Angular lifecycle hooks. So basically, you all know this Angular is a completely component-based framework. The component is doing very important role. So for handling these components, uh, we have this lifecycle hooks. Okay. So basically, if you are checking any of the component, you can see this ng on into function. Okay. The similar way we have seven more events. So that's what the definition says. This Angular lifecycle hooks are the method. So it's applicable for the components and the directives. It invokes when the directives or components creates changes and destroying them. Okay. So let me show the all the events. So you can see this ng on changes, ng on in, ng do check. These are the basic events, including this destroy also, and other force. This 4 to 7, uh, these are only component related. It's not applicable for the directives. So before moving to this lifecycle hooks, you should know the process of Angular application. When the Angular application starts, it's first to create and render the root component, then it's render the child components, and then it's render the child of child component. Okay. Once the component is loaded, it starts the process of rendering the view. For doing this one, it will check the input properties and evaluate the data bindings. Okay. Now let me explain this constructor. Okay. The constructor basically it is not a lifecycle hook and also it's not the feature of Angular. So this is the feature from this JavaScript. It will be invoked when the class is created. So when the constructor calling time, there is no input properties are available in the particular components. That means it's not ready to use because it's not loaded. Once Angular initiate the class, it kickstart the change detection cycle of the component. Okay. Here the important aspect is, so we should know the order of all events. So as I mentioned, we have this eight events. So we should know the order and also we should know what are the actions are happening in the each and every event. Then only we can write our custom functions. So we know where we supposed to write our logics. So let me go to my application here. I'm going to create one component. I will explain everything step by step. So this is my created application. Let me create the component and generate component. And my component name is lifecycle. Okay, great. The component is created. Okay, here you can see this constructor and also it's implement this on init lifecycle hook. So here let me add one console. So this ng on in component is called only one time. So while initiating our component. So in that situation, there is no child components are loaded. So this is the perfect place for doing any initialization related steps. Okay. And let me write the next event. Do check. So basically these are the interfaces. So if I'm adding this one, so I should implement this one. Okay. Let me add the console ng do check. Okay, it's not mandatory to adding this one, so we can directly also add. But the thing is, if we are doing step by step, we will get some better idea. Okay, so let me save it. Now, what I'm going to do, let me add this component in our app dot component, then we can verify. Now let me see the output. Okay, if you noted in this console or uh, the order of the events, the first one is ng on int, the second one is ng do check, and this ng do check called one more time. Why? Because it invokes during the every change detection cycle. If there is any event change, it will be executed automatically. So now we have completed this ng do check and ng on int. Now let me explain this ng on changes. Basically, this event only going to execute first, but there is one condition was there. If there is any input property changes, then only it should be executed. Otherwise, it's not going to execute. So in our scenario also, we are not able to see. Anyway, let me include this event also. So the all events are belong to this Angular core only. So uh, let me implement this one also. So 
see now so the particular event is not it uh, executed so let me implement the logic here first i am going to initiate only input property now let me go to our app component here I'm going to pass the data here so currently we have this title so let me pass this one and also here I'm going to create one input box and on event so let me define this function here so this dot title equal to data Okay, fine. See now, so the ng on changes is fired initially. The next one is ng on int and this ng do check. Okay, now let me change some values here. So when there is an any change, so again this ng on changes is fired. So the automatically ng do check also fired because there is a change detection. So it's called automatically okay great so the next one is ng on destroy so basically this event is executed when the component is destroyed so let me create one scenario so in this app component so we just called this component here here let me create this ng if is visible okay and also I'm going to create one button click here and here I'm going to write on event so the function name is show hide just define the function so let me take this property here so initially the value should be true so when I'm clicking this one I'm going to change the value equal to not equal to this dot is visible it is just like a toggle operation okay we have done and also in our component lifecycle component I am going to implement this destroy event on destroy ok we have added let me save it see now we have this data changed so ng on changes is coming then ng on it this ng do check now I am going to click this button so when I am clicking the component got disabled that means it's hide it so automatically this ng on destroy is fired now let me click once again see now our component is loaded so automatically again this ng on changes ng on it and ng do check also fired that means it's executed so if there is an any data change once again this ng on changes and ng do check only fired so again i'm trying to click this button so automatically this ng on destroy okay this is all about the life cycle hooks of basic events now let me move on the component specific events the ng after content int and this ng after content checked 
So the first event is ng after content int. So the init related events are invoked only one time. Okay. And uh, this event is invoked immediately after Angular has completed the initialization of all our component contents. Okay. At the same way, this ng after content checked, it is called every change detection event after completing our component content projection. Okay, the first one is for initiation. After that, any changes, this checked event will be taken care of. So it's similar to our basic event. So we have this ng on int event. The same way, this do check event will fired for the every change detection. So let me implement these two events also. After content int and also after content checked. The first one is done. The second one also. Let me add both the console. So now we can see the executing order. See now ng on changes, ng on int, ng do check. So after that, ng after content initialization, ng after content checked. Okay, now let me move on to the next event. So the next one is ng after begin it. So it is invoked immediately after Angular has completed the initialization of our components view. And also as I mentioned, the in end event. So it will execute it only one time. The similar way we have this checked event also, it will be fired for the any change detection. And also if you are checking this difference between after event and this after content int, the first one is after content int. So it invokes the components external contents or completed their initialization executed the same way after event it is invoked uh, the components views are completed their initialization that means the component has some child component so all the views are gets loaded this event should be executed okay let me create this event also in our application so we can remove all these things it's not required after we went the same way after we checked let me create the methods also so the first one is done okay the second one also done now let me add the console also okay we have added all the functions here see the order now ng on changes ng on it ng do check so then ng after content int ng after content checked ng after view int then ng after view checked so the similar way you can see these three events are fired these three are the check event so if there is an any change detection it will be fired automatically now let me change some value here test okay so automatically this ng on changes is fired the similar way this change detection events also gets fired so if i'm trying to click this one it will destroy the component okay it's completely destroyed the single event is fired so when i'm clicking once again the component going to be initiated that means all the events are executed once again see now so after this ng on destroy again you can see this seven events ng on changes int do check after content okay so as i mentioned this ng on changes if you don't have this input property it's not going to execute let me show you I just commanded here and here also I'm just removed so 
So you now we have this on int do check only. We don't have this ng on changes. So it's destroyed. Again, I'm clicking. So again, it starts from this ng on int only. So let me revoke my changes once again. Okay, this is the order of execution of Angular lifecycle hooks. Still, if you have any doubts or clarification, please post in the comment box. And also, please don't forget to subscribe my channel. Thank you. Thanks for watching.